In this video, we're going to take a look at the new API security module on the damn vulnerable web application. In the last video, we looked at the new cryptography module, boo, and now we're going to look at the API security module, yay. Oh, one thing to mention is I'm now running the Docker instance of this, as you can see here, so that's why we've got this port number at the top. The reason being there were some issues with the normal install when it came to the API security module. Just because it's new out, I did raise an issue on GitHub and DigiNinja was trying to get things sorted, but it wasn't like rewriting the roots or something and we we're getting files not found and things like that. So I ended up just using the Docker instance and I'll do that for this API module. Let's take a look first of all at the low difficulty. It says, versioning is important in APIs. Running multiple versions of an API can allow for backward compatibility and can allow new services to be added without affecting existing users. The downside to keeping old versions alive is when those older versions contain vulnerabilities. Look at the call used to create this table and see if you can exploit it to return some additional information. Okay, so I'm gonna open up F12, which is gonna bring up these developer tools. And I'm gonna reload the page because I wanna see what call was made to the API. And you'll see, okay, we've got a main page here. We've got some CSS. We've got some stuff that's just on every page because it's related to the labs. And we have this one here, which is API slash V2 slash user. I'm gonna go over to the response and you can see that it's got these JSON objects. Each one of them has a user in it but there's nothing particularly sensitive in there that we could use. So why don't we just try and change the version? There's a bit of a hint there, right? It's V2. So why don't we try V1? Let's give it a go. I change this, I go to V1 and click send. It comes back and this time we've got all these results again, but notice that they now have a password as well. And what I will do is open up Sublime. Let's open up hashes. I'll paste these in here. These look like SHA-256 hashes, so longer than MD5 anyway, so I would guess that they're SHA-256. Yeah, I'll paste them in here and we'll try and crack them with Hashcat. There we go, three hashes. So I always forget the mode with Hashcat, so what I'm going to do is Hashcat-HH, which I think is the advanced menu, and then I will pass that to grep, I'll get case insensitive, and I'll do SHA. And the reason I'm not doing SHA-256 is because I always make this mistake of doing SHA-256, and the mode that I'm looking for never shows up. And I think it's because we have a dash in between the, which one is it? It's this one, SHA-2256, I believe. So yeah, mode 1400. So that's it. I just wanted to find out what that was. Now I can set the mode to 1400. And then I'll provide the hashes and the word list. I always forget what way around this is. So I'm just going to see if there's any errors. I've got an alias set up for this word list, rock you. So you can see I can just type in rock you like that. And it should just find the user slash share slash word list slash rock you dot txt but even though it is quite a big word list there are better ones so you can get like the crack station word list or you can just go to crackstation.net which is what i often do instead i think there is some way you can download yeah you can download the dictionaries here but it says they've got a 19 gigabyte 1.5 billion entry lookup table which is not something i'm gonna download onto my vm all right didn't ask me to do any capture that is surprising Okay. I'm going to paste these here. Let's just crack them as well. There we go. All three of them came back. And if we go back to Hashcat, we'll see that only one of them came back here was the let me in. And yeah, none of the other two. So Tony Hart and Heartbeat weren't in there. But if we used a better word list, we would have got them. It would have been slower though. So let's just use CrackStation. All right, that's it done. I think that was the, the goal solved. I don't think there was, there's nothing going to come up and say that we've solved the lab, but we have got the passwords. We cracked them as well. So yeah, I mean, there's a vulnerability, right? Now let's go to change the difficulty level to medium, click submit, and we'll go back to the API. All right, so the medium difficulty says, look at the call used to update your name and exploit it to elevate your user to admin, which is level zero. So we've got this one. Let me click submit. We could open up our dev tools. This time I'm going to go to Burp Suite instead. Basically the same thing though. And we will see a get request here. First of all, it came back with a user ID two level one. But then we also saw a put request, which took the name and then it returned these things. So, I mean, maybe you would just assume, maybe if I do cat here as well, we click submit. Let's go and have a look at it. All right, so it sent cat. Cat came back with level one. I mean, I would just guess to say it's returning other values, right? So we know we can update the name. Can we update these values, the ID and the level? And I mean, the level is what we want to update. We want it to be zero according to the level, according to the lab description thing. So change it to zero, click send, and it comes back with the level at zero. Now, the problem is 
as soon as I click submit here, it is going to resubmit that user. So it's not actually going to work. And I think it, even the same with morph. Like if I do, let me go back here and do morph. Click send. All right. So we've updated morph to level zero. But if I now go back here, it still says it's a user. So yeah, what I'll do instead is just intercept the request. I'm going to do submit. And oh, what? I thought I just turned that on. I guess not. Let's do it again. There we go. This time it has got the request. And yeah, in here, I'll just go and say that the level should be equal to zero. We forward it, we turn intercept off, and now we have elevated ourselves to admin. All right, cool. Another way we could have done that would be to have a look at documentation. You can try and go to like swagger.json and v2 swagger.json, openai.json, things like that. There's a list on the port swagger labs, but I remember that this one isn't the default one. I can't actually remember what it is. So let me do ls vulnerabilities API. Oh uh, yeah, it's openapi.yml. So yeah, this would have been another option would be to download this and take a look at it. If we open it up, we can go and have a look through. So we could look for the put request or we could look for user. We could look for some of those values we saw. So here we've got login user. It's not that one. And we have order. Yeah, get the user. Not that one, not that one. All right, maybe we just do put instead because probably not everything has a put option. And yeah, update user by ID. You can see it takes an ID path. These are required. Okay. Uh, it's not very easy to read here. You're better off importing this into some tool, which we will do on the next level. But yeah, somewhere in here is the parameters that it'll take. And you'll see that one of those parameters is the level. So we basically just exploited some either the documentation or just by guessing or um, making some intelligent guesses from the responses. Anyway, that's it. I'm rambling. Let's go to DBWA security. Let's change it to high and let's do the final one. Okay, so this level says we've got an open API document, which is only just opened. Have a look and see at the health functions and see if one of them has a vulnerability. You might be able to work out the calls by hand, but it'd be a lot easier to use one of these tools. So yeah, you can do exactly that. It mentions a burp extension, which I hadn't used before. Actually, if you have burp pro, I think you need burp pro for this. You can go to new scan and then API only. API definition, and then you basically just provide the URL of that. So let me do open api.yml, upload, and yeah, upload successful. And here you go, you've got the API details here where it actually shows you what each of the URLs are. And then if we click one, let's say connectivity, you can go into parameters and then it has some example parameters that it would take as well. The only thing is here, it has the host set to dbwa.test, which I could go and update in the host file. But then also the port is different because I'm using this Docker instance. So yeah, there's no point clicking scan here. It's not going to work. It's not going to do anything good for us. But maybe we just go and copy these URLs or we could just go and use one of the extensions that recommended. So one of them is this B App Store one. I think if you just go to settings and extensions, no, not settings. Uh, I'll just go to the extensions tab, add extension. Nope, not that either. Where is the B app store? Okay, this tab here. And yeah, in here, why don't we just search for Swagger? Yeah, open API parser. I think that's the one we were looking for. So we can install it if we want. It'll add a new tab up here, I think. And then we just do the same thing, just provide that URL, which was openapi.yaml. We load it. And here we go. Just gives us all that again. We've got a description. We've got some examples of the parameters. So we're interested in these four health checks. And yeah, you can see here, we've got this words one, I think, can I send this to the repeater? I can send it to the repeater, but again, it has the wrong host. And then the target up here is wrong. And I know if I change it, it's not going to work. So what way did I do this? Well, let me just take a copy of this. There's probably a better way to do this. But yeah, this is the way I did it. So hit enter, it's not gonna work, it's gonna actually say 404 not found. Yep, 404 not found. So I'm going to send it to the repeater. Control and R. No, not control. I did press the wrong finger. It is control and R. It's control and R. And then control and shift and R if you want to jump to that new tab. All right, we get there. We click send. 404 not found. So what should we do? We should try and change the request method. I'm going to change it to post and click send. Now it says words not specified. Okay, so remember what it said here that you could provide some words as a body. So I'm going to do that. Click send. And it still says not specified. So 
What's the other thing we could do? We could try and change the content type. And there is an extension to do this. I'm going to convert it to JSON. Send again. And this time we get OK. Nice. So we're using the API as intended. Why don't we try and inject something in here? Can we do like a semicolon for command injection? Put in like LS or something. But it just comes back with our reply each time. Maybe we could put in like a quote as well to see if we've got like some SQL injection error. But unfortunately, we do not. And yeah, you basically need to go through each one of these. I thought this was a more interesting one because health connection and it's taking a target. So maybe it is running like, well, actually, we've already got a ping one here as well, but it doesn't take any parameters. So yeah, let's do this one. Can I just copy the URL? No. OK, well, I'll just manually change this to connectivity. We click send. It says the target isn't specified. So we'll change the target. And it says, taking a little while, the example was digi.ninja, right? So why don't I try and change it to localhost and see if that's any different. Notice it's just waiting there. It's not even, okay, connection failed. All right, let's try localhost. Oh, it got rid of it. Okay, cancel. Localhost, send. Okay, all right, so that came back okay. Nice, all right, so. The problem is we don't want to see anything here. So what I'm going to do is set up a remote connection. I'm going to do web up, just create a simple web server. I'm already using that. Okay. Python dash M HTTP dot server on port 8,000. All right. So set that up and then I'm going to do ngrok HTTP 8,000. And that's just going to export, uh, not export, expose my local HTTP server to the internet on this address. And I just want to see, do I get a hit if I change this to my address. Let's do send. Oh, it failed. Okay. What about without the HTTP? Let's see. Do we get a connection here? We, oh, it says, okay, but we didn't get a connection. All right. All right. All right. Well, last time what I did here was we've already got a local host. I'm going to put in a semicolon and then I'm going to just try and inject a command. Can we do like curl and then provide that address and yeah, there we go. So we've got a get request and you can see that it made that request. So we've got command injection. We've confirmed that we can use arbitrary commands like curl against our own server, but that's not much use. We want to try and extract something. And to do that, I'm going to try and put in here, let's say command equals, and then let's do dollar sign brackets. I'm going to say, who am I? We click send and we already know we're going to get the connection. We just want to see, does it come back with a parameter? And it does, it comes back and tells us that the current user is www.data. So we're able to execute commands and export the results to our own local web server. So that's it, we found the vulnerability and we use the API docs to do it. Oh, one thing I can mention, it did suggest also Swagger UI and you can go to Swagger. There is like a live editor, I think it's, is it just editor.swagger? Yeah, it is, yeah, nice. All right, so you can just go here. You can paste this in and then here we go. I don't know, it comes up with some errors. Just ignore those. Notice that it does have all of the different operations and they're broken down quite nicely so that we can go and see the examples here as well. Um, but that's it. That's how we solve the high difficulty. Uh, hopefully I didn't miss anything. Let us just finally go and change the difficulty to impossible. Go back to the API and it tells us something about setting up OAuth 2.0. I don't think there's actually a lab. It's more just like a guide. Go and set this up yourself and play around with it, which I'm not going to do in a video. Surprise, surprise. But that's it until they release a new module. I guess that's the end of this video series. Oh, and let me know if they do release a new module because I don't even know how long this cryptography one was out for before I noticed it. I just happened to see that the author posted on Twitter that the API one was out and then realized I missed one. So yeah, if new ones come out and you want to see a video, you just need to just let me know in the comments or join my Discord or something. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.